Well, as you heard in the briefing today, we are headed in the right direction, albeit slowly. And here to talk a little bit more about that is Dr. Ruth Bergeron with the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. Dr. Bergeron, as always, thank you so much for joining us. I want to begin by just asking you to break down where we are right now. What is your assessment of where our community stands as it pertains to COVID-19? So we've been trending right down along the projected model, um, the, the way we predicted, and um, the hospitalization levels are coming down. I rounded in the hospital today, so while we still have sick patients in there, um, and you know it's not exactly a cakewalk, um, things are better than they were. So. Um, what we need to do is to take note and keep doing what we're doing. Um, the projections uh, that are being talked about for the coming weeks, I don't have a graph for you, it hasn't been released to me, but what I'm told is that we'll continue to see this um, sloping downward for the average daily census of the hospitalization. We can hope and expect to see continued decline in that percent positivity rate in the community. Um, and then we look at the hospital at daily, um, average daily census rates. And so we're thinking that mid to late September, we're looking at, you know, two to 300 people in the hospital, whereas now we're in the 500s. So that's coming down nicely. And then we expect it to kind of stick around in that low plateau. And the model is taking into account going back to school, Labor Day, but it takes into account continued mandatory masks and continued closure of bars and not having mass gatherings. If those things don't go as we think they should or as they have been, then the model will be thrown off and we'll see a surge again. Doctor, as we head into the fall months and the winter months, of course, the flu is always a concern. This year, really a concern. Your best pitch for folks on why they should get the vaccine this year. Um, so flu shots don't prevent COVID, but they do prevent death. And uh, they also prevent you from getting symptoms that mimic COVID. So you have, we have every reason in the world and it's in everyone's best interest to make sure you don't get flu-like symptoms because as soon as you have them, you're going to have to go get a COVID test. You're going to have to quarantine while you wait for that COVID test. And then if you find out that you'll have, you have flu and not COVID, then it will have been uh, for nothing. So please get your flu shot and expect to see continued decline in that percent positivity rate in the community. Um, and then we look at the hospital at daily, um, average daily census rates. And so we're thinking that mid to late September, we're looking at, you know, two to 300 people in the hospital, whereas now we're in the 500s. So that's coming down nicely. And then we expect it to kind of stick around in that low plateau. And the model is taking into account going back to school, Labor Day, but it takes into account continued mandatory masks and continued closure of bars and not having mass gatherings. If those things don't go as we think they should or as they have been, then the model will be thrown off and we'll see a surge again. Doctor, as we head into the fall months and the winter months, of course, the flu is always a concern. This year, really a concern. Your best pitch for folks on why they should get the vaccine this year. Um, so flu shots don't prevent COVID, but they do prevent death. And uh, they also prevent you from getting symptoms that mimic COVID. So you have, we have every reason in the world and it's in everyone's best interest to make sure you don't get flu-like symptoms because as soon as you have them, you're gonna have to go get a COVID test. You're gonna have to quarantine while you wait for that COVID test. And then if you find out that you'll have, you have flu and not COVID, then it will have been uh, for nothing. So please get your flu shot and it's so that when it comes to election day, if you or if you're doing early voting, that when you go, you get in and you get out quickly because you won't be lingering um, and trying to agonize about who you're actually voting for. We have, as you heard already, prolonged opportunity for early voting, and that is wonderful. And that should allow us to space people out. And I strongly encourage people to get out there early in the day 
um, know where you're going and get this voting done and not have everybody clumped together on election day. Those are the big ones. But remember that our projection models that show things looking good and stable in San Antonio for the fall assume that we're all masking. So if people show up unmasked to vote, those projections will be thrown off. Doctor, I think that leads into one of our viewer questions today. This is from Melinda. She wanted to know when there's a vaccine, if they receive it, how much longer would we need to wear a mask after being vaccinated uh, if, if, say, there are still people who have not received the vaccine out there or those who will refuse to take the vaccine? So um, optimistic people think that we'll be vaccinating in 2021. Um, I'm optimistic enough to believe that certainly a lot of us are going to be getting vaccinated in the spring of 2021, but we have a large metropolitan area and we know from experience and just having people get their childhood vaccines, the vaccines you need for back to school, getting the flu shot, it takes us a long time to reach everybody in the community and get them to come in. So if the vaccine were released on March the 1st, it's going to take us a long time to get the metropolitan area vaccinated. And so be aware of that. If people are talking about right now, you know, there are two actively enrolling vaccine trials in San Antonio that I know of, and perhaps another one on the way very soon. Those vaccines um, are still in the clinical trial phase. So you're either gonna get a fake vaccine, meaning the placebo, or you're going to get the vaccine itself. And so you, you won't know, and the person who gives you the shot won't know. So after that kind of a vaccine trial um, shot, you better wear your mask because you don't know what you have. And I think we have time for one more viewer question. This one comes from Kevin. Kevin asks, what is the possibility I may have some good immunity to COVID-19 because I'm exposed regularly to raw wastewater? Um, not good. <laughs> because not, it's not a good chance that you have immunity because of being exposed to wastewater. While it's true that we can detect uh, by the PCR method, we can detect viral RNA in human stool, human feces, it is not live vi virus. We can, when we try to culture that virus that comes from stool, it does not grow. So that means that if you're being exposed to COVID through wastewater, you're not being exposed to the live virus, you're not having an infection, and that's not a way to get immunity. All right, Dr. Ruth Bergeron from the Long School of Medicine, UT Health San Antonio. We'll see you again later tonight on the Night Beat after the Democratic National Convention. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.